Hello everybody, welcome to my presentation about Margaret Macmillan theory. Let me introduce myself. My name is Marjan and I'm a teacher assistant in the Montessori school. Thank you for coming today. My team, Raven and Melanie, are looking forward to talk with you all today. Hello everyone, I am Melanie. You are probably wondering who in the world is Margaret Macmillan? As was I when I began this journey of discovery, and we unearthed a rather interesting pioneer who helped pave the way for play-based approaches in child care today. Or as the writer J.B. Priestley wrote in 1947 in an article with the same name, she was the nuisance who worked miracles. In the article, he reminisces that she was one of those beastly agitators who was always bringing up awkward subjects and making decent people uncomfortable. What kind of person is this? Well, she was many things, a socialist, a politician, a campaigner, a pioneer, and a writer. Allow me to introduce to you Margaret Macmillan. Margaret's parents, James and Jean Macmillan, who were originally from Inverness, Scotland, immigrated to New York in 1840. Nineteen years later, Rachel was born, followed by Margaret a year later. This was at the time of hoop skirts and crinoline and something called the ditto suit, which was a jacket, vest, and trousers that men would wear that was made of all the same fabric as you can see in the pictures. This all was followed after the Industrial Revolution of the 1830s and the 1840s, or as modern historians today call it, the First Industrial Revolution. In 1865, an epidemic of scarlet fever claimed the life of Margaret's father and a younger sister. It also left Margaret deaf until she was about the age of 14. Left alone and deeply upset about the loss, Jean decided to return to Inverness, Scotland with her two daughters, Rachel and Margaret. Back in Scotland, Margaret and Rachel attended and studied at the Inverness High School. But another loss would occur as their mother, Jean, passed away in 1877. It was decided then that Rachel would stay to care for their ill grandmother, while Margaret would leave for London to continue studies in psychology and physiology and later in languages and music. In 1887, Rachel was introduced to Christian socialism as she was visiting a cousin. Upon hearing a sermon at a church they visited, Rachel became interested in learning more. After attending several socialist meetings, Rachel was hooked and excited to share her new belief. In 1888, Margaret and Rachel's grandmother died. Rachel reunited with her sister in London as she no longer had any responsibilities in Scotland. Rachel introduced Margaret to Christian socialism and after her conversion, the women worked together to make changes that would benefit many along the way. What exactly is Christian socialism? The main idea of socialism is the redistribution of wealth. It is where the less fortunate are cared for by the community and wealth is distributed more evenly. A Christian socialist combines Christian ethics and socialism. As Christian socialists, Margaret and Rachel worked to influence public policy so they could improve the lives of the poor. In 1889, the sisters helped the industrial workers during the London Dock Strike. During this time, the pay was low and the work was dangerous and the work always wasn't guaranteed. After the success of the strike, nearly winning all of its demands, the sisters continued to spread the ideas of Christian socialism to other industrial workers. In 1892, they were encouraged to head to Bradford, London, where they would also find success in helping those in the industrial environment. It was during this time that they began visiting homes of the poor, and after several years were convinced they should focus on the welfare of the slum child. The sisters were highly involved in politics. They joined political societies such as the Fabian Society, which was a group 
that work to educate the general public about socialism through lectures and meetings and written material. They were also involved in the strongly progressive Social Democratic Federation. With some of its measures, including the call for a 48-hour work week, the abolition of child labor and equality for women. And they became involved with the Independent Labour Party, which represented the working class in Parliament. In 1894, Margaret was elected to be part of the Independent Labour Party, which would give her the opportunity to have an influence on what was happening in the schools in Bradford. When it became clear that they were going to concentrate on improving the physical and intellectual welfare of the slum child, in 1892, Macmillan, along with a Bradford's medical officer, began inspections of the schools. This began her first campaign calling for local authorities to install bathrooms, improve ventilation, and supply free school meals for children. In 1906, the sisters led a campaign for school meals, and after the House of Commons was convinced that hungry children cannot learn, the Provision of Schools Meals Act was passed, which permitted local authorities to provide the school meals. Margaret continued to campaign for the children. She argued for a broader education that would allow kids to be, li live beyond a life of unskilled work. This led to the opening of school clinics and night camps. In 1908, the sisters opened the first school clinic that provided dental and surgical care and lessons in breathing and posture to children at schools. In 1910, they opened another clinic that served schools in the Deptford area. At this time, the sisters also began a night camp where slum children could come to get washed up, receive clean nightwear, and a place to sleep. They provided showering facilities, which Margaret described as a hot water apparatus rigged up in the garden fence communicating with a neighbor's boiler. The sisters also taught the older children how to make porridge the next morning. Upon seeing that the night camps were so successful, improving the children's behavior and health, the sisters decided to take another step with the children and developed school camps for children ages 6 to 14. Here, instead of being in overcrowded classrooms, the children learned out in the open. Rachel is quoted to have said, educate every child as if he were your own. And this became the motto for the sisters, which they used for the remainder of their lives. In 1914, with the help of a national drive for child care that allowed women to work outside the home during World War I, the Macmillans opened a baby camp, which became known as the nursery. Later, the sisters opened the Open Air Nursery School and Training Center. Over the years and through the many experiences of the sisters, Margaret wrote and wrote and wrote. She wrote about child labor, what was happening in schools, especially the health and the education, and many other topics that affected the child in early years. Some of her works are still available today and are inf influential in the field. Pictured, you can see some of her works, such as the Labor and Childhood book, Early Childhood, Education Through the Imagination, and the Nursery School. I'm going to talk about the view of the child on Margaret Macmillan theory. What was Margaret Macmillan's view of the child? Margaret Macmillan believed that children have a cohesive mind and are constantly learning. Experience and repetition can help discover their talent. She attached particular importance to children's play in the open space. Also, parents should be aware of how children are learning while learning from the children by being available. In addition to being a teacher, Macmillan defended children's rights and tried and fought for years. Her view of on children inspired regulation on a large She also emphasized the importance of children's health, nutrition, and physical and mental well-being. 
Her view set the standard for the education and recognition of children in children's in the child center for children and staff. She believed that children would learn in a safe environment and feel calm. Challenging children playing and interact interaction with others would provide opportunity for them to be stimulated and for learning to occur. In the game, children will learn their skills to grow, discover their talent, and express their feeling. Children can only learn well if they have opportunities to play. The game can help the child development intel, intel, intellectual, mother, and cognitive skills. Margaret Macmillan is one of the pioneers of the opinion that the outdoor space and the open environment are not only less important than the indoor space and cover and close educational room but also may have more learning value. Influence of the Macmillan theory. Although Macmillan developed free flow play to help nursery teachers establish a setting where kids could develop self-expression and anatomy under holistic development and learning. Frobel had a major influence on her work. For instance, she provided the kids with the whole environment that encompassed education, meal, nutrition, promotion, and health promotion, the children's general physical health as well as their in intellectual and social growth were taken care of. The educational approach, uh, approach of the Macmillan sister was initially created by Margaret Macmillan, who, like Montessori, was influenced by the idea of the um, French Edward II. This was about the curriculum and toys that promote the de development of fine and gross motor skills and the excellence of the skills. It was useful. The Italian education Maria Montessori working method and this uh, teaching strategy were highly compatible. This part, this Macmillan expanding and developing the idea of Montessori turn mother to the view and theories of the German <coughs> Frederick Froebel and gave increasing importance to the fact that children should first first hand experience personality to pay. According to him, communication and emotion were equally crucial in physical movement, since play in how children use their knowledge and cognition, Macmillan value free play as very important. In the 1920s, she was connected to Rudolf Steiner, another important figure in early year education, and who appreciated the work she was doing. She supported the Steiner a school movement going forward. She had a big impact on education, even as of today. With the emphasis on imagination, play, and first-hand experiences still as important today. Hi everyone, my name is Raven, um, and I'm going to be talking to you about the history of the Macmillan schools and then how they're run today. So in 1914, the sisters opened the Open Air Nursery and Training School, um, and the philosophy behind this was that the outdoors and fresh air would help fight against the diseases that the children knew all too well. Um, the school was created for disadvantaged children that needed the opportunity to have clean clothes, water, food, um, and especially food that would provide uh, basic nutrients. Um, but unfortunately, as soon as they opened their new school, World War I began. Um, so they became not only a space um, to help children combat illness, um, but they also were a place where mothers could bring their children so that they could work to support the war effort. It was believed by the sisters that this open air concept was essential to provide exercise and joy. Um, in an article called The History of the Macmillan Sisters, it said um, Mar Margaret was convinced that fresh air, exercise, and good nutritious food would improve their health in a way that the clinic could not. 
um, Margaret believed wholeheartedly that the design of even the building was important um, to provide sunlight and as much air as possible. Um, Margaret also believed in nurturing the child as a whole, as opposed to just the basic aspects of life, like um, clean, clean clothes and food and water. Um, they also deserved passion and kindness and learning. Um, the children were seen as people that deserved to learn and explore, and they were provided with this as well as just basic needs. In the grand scheme of things, um, the scheduling for each day was pretty much the same. Um, after they would get dropped off, they would wash and they would brush their teeth and then they would have breakfast, which would include milk. Um, and then around 9 a.m. they would do handwork and, and lessons and then they would also have garden play. Um, Margaret was very passionate about um, children playing in the garden and playing outside and learning about the earth. Um, and then around noon they would have lunch. Um, which would be concluded with uh, a rest time for each child, um, which is important um, in order to keep up their energy for the rest of the day. And then when the afternoon would come, it would include music and they could free play and they could play games, um, which was included in the basic schedule of the day. The ideas they had for these schools um, started with opening up camps. So they had a girls camp and then they had a boys camp uh, where the children were about six to 14. Um, but Margaret felt like this was too late in their lives to positively affect the children as well as they could have. Um, so they opened a baby camp, which soon became the open air nursery. And it was a key factor in creating the child centers that we have today. Um, for example, there's a uh, Macmillan Nursery School in the UK, and um, on their website, they say that they aim to provide excellent preschool education in an environment which is fun and caring while meeting individual social, physical, and emotional needs. Um, they believe that relationships with families is very important, and keeping up with the children's cre creativity is an essential priority. Something that I really enjoyed um, looking through the Macmillan Nursery School website is that they have a list of what their values are, which I think very much coincide with what the values of the sisters were. Um, for example, they say that their values are happiness, well-being and enjoyment, keeping everybody safe, everybody matters, creativity and innovation, valuing learning for life um, or empowering, um, choice and opportunity, participation, communication, um, positive impact on the wider world and economic well-being, which I think are all very important values to instill on the young children of our generation. Thank you for listening to our presentation, and I hope you learned a little bit of history about uh, Margaret Macmillan and the history that comes with that, and that you can take away a little bit from the values and the philosophy that um, the Macmillan sisters had that really shape the childcare that we provide today.